So you all saw um, the film that, that opened the program, the tribute film to Paul Taylor, and right at the very beginning, um, we saw images of Paul Taylor at Jacob's Pillow, and we saw briefly um, Paul working with Sean Mahoney on the solo from Oriole that you saw Sean dance tonight. That was in uh, July 16th, 1993, um, that he made, that Taylor 2 made their debut here at Jacob's Pillow, and Sean danced Paul, the Paul Taylor role in Oriole that we saw him doing tonight 26 years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sean, how old, how old were you then? Uh, 17. <laughs> can you tell us what you remember about, about that? Do you, um, can you tell us about the process of learning it, of, of Paul coaching it? Of, do you remember anything particularly he spoke with you about? Yeah, it was, um, I mean, I was 17, so it's really hard to pinpoint uh, important aspects. It was just, I was 17 and all this stuff was happening at the same time for me. I graduated high school uh, on the 20th of June and then the 21st I was on tour. Uh, so like, that was a big, it was a, a big paradigm shift for me from going to a angsty teenager to, oh, you gotta be a professional now. So learning, uh, we learned Oriole and three epitaphs here. There were only five of us in the company, uh, which mirrored the original Taylor Company, uh, just five dancers. Um, we learned from the alumni, uh, both of those dances, and got to perform them on the inside out stage here. And Paul was, was watching the rehearsal and, and there were cameras everywhere. And I think what blew me away more than anything was this, this statuesque figure, this Abraham Lincoln memorial guy who just sits in a chair and, and watches what you're doing, all of a sudden gets up and physicalizes what he did 50 years ago. Uh, that, that thing was something that, that stuck with me big time. He had asked me, um, he stands up and walks over, and there's a, a tricky step in three epitaphs where you have to kick your legs up and swing your arms. I think it was also in the, the short little blurb in the beginning. Uh, he, he said, are you trying to do this and does this jump? And I look at him and I said, well, I'm trying to do that, uh, but you'll have to let me know how it goes. And he says, you'll get it one day. Still working on it. 26 years later. Yeah. Um, do you remember anything in particular that he told you about the Oriole solo um, that stuck with you? Uh, yeah, he said that this solo, uh, it is just about you and, and the earth. Uh, there is nothing outside of what you're doing. You're by yourself out there, uh, regardless of what happens, regardless of your day prior or post and stuff, it is just you on stage by yourself, get it together. Uh, and the, the idea behind everything was uh, all these movements that I have, uh, that he has, um, were basically just about like blessing the earth. Uh, it's this, like the statuesque great oak, um, I don't know. I, I can put all this analogies into uh, uh, Game of Thrones, but I don't think I will right now. <laughs> Michelle, your relationship with Paul uh, as a choreographer, um, uh, can you, can, um, and in rehearsal, uh, we saw Michelle also in Oriole tonight. Um, uh, can, you, can you tell us just generally about Paul uh, as both a choreographer working on you, um, uh, creating on you, um, as well as just him in rehearsal? What, what are some things that you remember about him in particular um, working with you? Yeah, so it's interesting. Paul had different relationships with different people. And um, what's so lovely about that is that he would, you know, get to know you in a, in a way. He would sit back and watch you. You didn't know you were being watched, of course. And then one day, either he's choreographing on you or you're rehearsing a piece and he'll either pull you to the side and whisper something to you. Um, and sometimes that's an acknowledgement of him enjoying what you did uh, or, you know, a little bit of a push to say that you are going to, you're, you'll get it, you know, keep working on it. Um, he would encourage me 
uh, and he, he allowed me to, to be myself, honestly, within each piece that I was in, um, which I, I found to be somewhat of a blessing for me in the sense that, you know, I, I love watching other dancers perform his work and if I attained one of those roles, I would be somewhat terrified you know, who wouldn't be? You're stepping into a new pair of shoes and hoping to live up to those shoes. And at the same time, you're trying to be yourself. You, you, there's no way that you can be that person. And he would allow me to do that, you know, and, and still uh, uh, capture the essence of the dance. Can you think of anything in, uh, can you give us a particular example maybe of that, of him allowing you to be yourself? So one particular moment that uh, this happened to me was in uh, Esplanade. Um, in the second section, the lady that does the running solo, she comes out and she's running around the family portrait and then kneels at the edge of the stage watching what's happening. And in rehearsal one day, I. I don't know what came over me. I started rocking a little bit. Um, nothing crazy, just there was this comforting rocking that just started happening. And you know, continued with the dance and, and, and we finished the dance. And I remember him calling me over and we were in that section getting notes. And he said, uh, you know, keep that. And so I did. And sometimes it would happen and sometimes it doesn't happen, but there was something comforting at that moment that, that just came over me and it just naturally happened. It wasn't forced or anything and so he allowed me to do that. And if someone else does, when someone else does that role, they don't necessarily have to do that. You know, that was for me in that moment and any time that he watched me do that role, uh, it it would sometimes happen, sometimes not. Um, so we saw you and Oriole also, and you were doing a, um, a role that was um, originally done by Liz Walton, yes. um, uh, an extraordinary uh, dancer in uh, Paul's company, um, when he made the piece in 1962. And, um, uh, and Every time you guys do something that wasn't made on you, that had been made earlier, you're always, as you said, stepping into somebody else's shoes. Um, so there's always probably that awareness, you have to make it your own, but somebody else, it was made on somebody else, yeah. um, in the same way that people coming in to learn your roles will be doing. Um, tell, tell us about learning that solo and the idea of that being Liz Walton's solo. Yeah, um, the very first time I learned that was actually in Taylor 2, and I remember being terrified <laughs> to perform it. Um, just the dance in general, I was terrified just because I knew how important this dance was, is. And Why, um, why is this dance important? Uh, you know, it's just like, it's, it's, it's classical, yet it was going against all things at the time. It's, it's classic Paul, it's, it's, you think of Paul Taylor, his solo, you think of the, the weightedness of the movement, yet it's so light and so joyous to watch, you know, um, it, it's just so beautiful and touching to watch. Uh, it has a special place in, in many people's hearts and in the dance world. So for me, learning that solo, I, I knew that, uh, there would be moments that, that I would maybe rush things or slow things down and then I, I learned to breathe, to relax, to just dance. Uh, and Paul would say that from time to time, it's just dancing, it's okay, you know? Uh, and, and, it's kind and of like what we that, hear him say in the film where he says, who, you know, who are you? I'm a dance maker. Right. Yeah. You know, he was so casual about it. Not that you, you know, if you did it wrong, you would be called out on it, of course. But, um, you know, it, it is just dancing when it comes down to it. You need to have fun, you need to love it and enjoy it and be in the moment, be completely present with people on stage, with the audience, and, and giving the energy that you are giving us when we're up here. 
Sean, uh, Paul actually cast you in a lot of his roles. Um, uh, some of the very important uh, um, earlier roles that he had danced himself. Um, and um, he saw something in you, obviously, that reminded him of himself as a mover. Did he ever talk to you about that? Or do you have any sense of why he was casting you in those dances in particular? I, I don't know. Um, when I was in Taylor 2, the roles that I got that were his were just because I was the taller guy. Um, I think that's honestly why I did the Oriole solo. Uh, uh, originally when you were 17, you yeah, mean, yeah. yeah. Um, but then uh, dances, oh, the program that was here in 64, which was Oriole, Scutterama, Peace Period, I think. Um, I actually was able to do Oriole and Scutterama, both danced by Paul and choreographed a few years from each other, but like the antithesis of movement. Uh, but still choreographed by the same guy. Um, that taught me something about him and what I had to learn about myself as a, as a dancer, that uh, Oriole, um, it is all about uh, being in control, um, knowing exactly where I need to put my foot, how to change my weight, all that kind of stuff. Scutterama is exactly the opposite. I have to be willing to just abandon everything. Like technique is out the window. It's a different, it's a new technique. Uh, throwing myself to the ground, making sure I need to be where I need to be so when someone falls on top of me, I can catch them, which is not what Oriole is at all. And I remember hearing some people uh, talk about it afterwards saying that I can't believe it was choreographed by the same person because the dances, it, it is a black and white. Within a year of each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, um, so for me, I, I had to grow up so fast, even though I'm 45, uh, still in my Oriole head and then having to flip 15 minutes later to my Scutterama head, that's, it's such a humbling experience. I've danced more than half my life, but I'm still learning how to do this stuff that was just so intuitive to him. <sighs> Bastard. <laughs> um, I can say that Paul told me about you was that there's a kind of fullness and generosity um, to your movement. Um, Paul, Paul Taylor had been a swimmer and um, he delighted in a very full use of musculature, particularly in the shoulder girdle, and he told me he saw that in you anyway, so you're being modest, but thank you. I, one of the feathers I can put in my cap is that I taught Brishnikov. Tell yeah. us about that. Right, so quick story. Um, <laughs> ticket sales weren't doing so well. We were performing at City Center and uh, Misha, uh, <laughs> He called up the company and said, hey, you know, do you have a solo that I can do? I can be a part of this thing. We can raise tickets, blah, 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 whatever. And Paul had said, sure, how about the Oreo solo? And Brishnikov said, yeah, that sounds great. So Brishnikov comes by the studio. I find out that this is happening. I'm still in Taylor 2, and I'm still dancing that part. And I asked uh, everybody if it was OK if I could just sit in the studio and just watch Paul coach Brishnikov, because there's so much that I can learn. And Betty DeYoung, our rehearsal director, said, yes, but you're going to hide under the piano. You are not there. You are a dormouse. Just be quiet. So I sat, I hid under the piano, and uh, Baryshnikov was expecting Paul to teach it to him. Well, Paul hadn't danced that dance in years and stuff, and he sees me under the, the piano and says, well, what did, what did you do? I went, oh, well, sir, I did something like this. So I got to teach Brishnikov the Oriole solo. <laughs> Who else can say that? But Sean, who was better? <laughs> I don't know. He liked me. Okay, so the question is about the experience of transition the company's going through right now um, since uh, Paul Taylor died last August. It's been interesting. I feel like the senior members in the company have um, been able to uh, coach the newer members that are coming up that didn't have Paul's, uh, didn't have his voice in their ear. Um, things that he had talked to us about that we can pass on. And uh, what's wonderful is uh, the fact that we've been here for such a long time and have gotten to do, I counted the list, I'm, I'm over a hundred dances uh, that I've done, and I think Michelle is too, uh, <laughs> with nearly twice as many roles uh, in, in those dances, just to be able to pass those pearls of wisdom on, uh, whether that be to Michael Novak, who didn't know that these were said before he got here, that kind of thing, uh, and then that he can pass those things on. He's got a wonderful support system, Michael Novak, which is us. Uh, Taylor is a family. You're here for life, whether you like it or not. It's the perfect Thanksgiving dinner. 
I don't know what that means. Um, but, but we make it work, and I think with, with the, the guidance of Michael Novak, who was a dancer, so he sees both sides, both sides of the dance belt, as it were. Um, that's a joke. <laughs> More laughter. Yeah, <laughs> that's good, thanks. Thank you. Uh, I, I think because he, he has, uh, you know, he knows what it's like to be on this side of the Marley and that side of the Marley. It, it's a, it's a, a unique eye. The Marley's the floor, by the way, thing. here. Oh, and what nobody tells you is that they when uh, dancers retire, they grind them up and turn them into the dance floor. So we, <laughs> we still support the next generation. I would say that all in all, Paul's, Paul did a wonderful thing when he chose dancers for this company. You know, we're all so very different and we all support, support each other all throughout our careers. In the beginning, towards the end, afterwards, um, people come back all it's the time. a very time. strong alumni network. A very strong alumni. Uh, so, so with transition, you know, we know that we have backup. We have all the information that we need in order to continue the legacy. Um, and transition, any transition is awkward and you go through growing pains and, and that is the reality of transition. But with strong support, you're able to get through that, you know, and, and thrive. And I believe in every dancer on this stage, every person that's in the office, because we believe in the work, we believe in Paul, and we love it so much that we want to watch it thrive. Like Sean said, and you said, this is a company that once you join, you spend your life uh, in. So um, it's, al it's always there. Mm -hmm. um, so um, both Sean and Michelle have announced their retirements. Uh, they are leaving the, at the end of the year. Um, so we've seen their last performances in the Taylor Company at Jacob's Pillow, and I think we should uh, give them a huge round of applause as they're in the <laughs>